Hey, Paco here. If you're from the Pacific Northwest, you're probably very familiar with Scotch broom. It's this plant right here. It's an invasive species, uh, and it's kind of taking over in a lot of areas. All this right here is Scotch broom. It's part of the Forest Service efforts to eradicate this stuff. They spend millions of dollars every year trying to get rid of it. So for a long time now, I've been trying to figure out a way to use this stuff uh, instead of just trying to destroy it. So I've come up with a new type of basket that uses scotch broom as the main part of it. So let's check it out. For this project, you're going to want to try and find the long, tall, skinny ones like this one. It's like the first year growth before they've started branching out. Uh, these will work better for what we are trying to do, which is harvest the leaves. To harvest the leaves, or as I'm going to call them, the needles, you're going to need a pair of scissors or you can use a knife. What you're going to do is you're going to look for these long straight pieces before they start branching, so right about there. That is one needle. Uh, these should, if you get the good ones, have quite a few long ones without any branches. Now, you can still use them if they branch on the side, so let me give an example. So this one here has all these side branches. If you take it and you just run your finger like that, it knocks all of them off. But I prefer to use them without the side branches. I think they give a nice cleaner look at the end. Continue trimming these until you have a large handful. Okay, so I've got a good bunch now to start. Uh, this should be enough to probably get done with my entire basket. Now at this point you have two choices. You can either uh, make it with the fresh leaves or you can take them home and let them dry for a few days and then uh, rehydrate them by soaking in water. Now I ran out of time to work on the basket up in the forest so I brought the scotch broom home and I let them dry for a few days. Uh, but now that they're dry, I've needed to soak them to get them ready to be used again. So these have been soaking in this pot of water. It's kind of warm water for the past, you know, half hour or so. Um, soak both sides so it's they're flexible both directions. But yeah, once you have them soaked, it is time to get started. Now you can leave the... Blah, 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 blah. Now you can leave the needles in the pot until you're ready to start using them. Um, or you can set them on a paper towel for them to dry a little bit as long as they're not going to dry for too long so they start getting inflexible again. And if you do leave them in the water for too long, I don't know if you can see that, but they may start turning a little bit darker. Uh, that's up to you if that's an issue for you or not. Uh, I'm going to let them sit out so that they will dry out a little bit. Now we're basing this basket on the pine needle basket style um, or a coiled basket. So these right here are ponderosa pine needles. Um, they're quite long when it comes to pine needles, but as a comparison, here are our scotch broom needles. Uh, they're leaves, but we're going to call them needles to match up to the pine needle style. Uh, so you can see they're quite long. Uh, we should be able to make a pretty good basket out of that. Um, they're thicker, so an individual pine needle might be like that, whereas an individual scotch broom needle will be like that, or even thicker. So we will be modifying the technique slightly to use the different material. Now for this project, we're also going to need wax thread and a needle. So I have this hemp twine here. Uh, it's relatively thick, um, so you're going to need a bigger needle. So what I have right here is this is a tapestry needle. Uh, it's dull, so it's not going to hurt you as much, but it'll still be sharp enough to make it through the, the needles. The more important part, part is that it's got a very wide eye so that the thread will go straight through it. Now before we get to that part though, we need to measure out uh, about two arms width of this. Okay, that's good. Now 
Now it's not ready yet. What we need to do is we need to wax this hemp thread. So in order to do that, uh, I have this block of wax. I've had this for years. Um, you can just use it over and over again. And what you do is you just take the thread and you set it on it and just start pulling across it like so. And what that does is it distributes a layer of wax onto it. Now I like to move it around a little bit so it doesn't all get in the same spot. You don't wear really deep grooves in. And then I like to turn around and go back the other direction. And what this does is it makes it so that it will slide through the needles easier and won't uh, get stuck and it won't fray the, the cord as much. Okay, last thing that I like to do is then take my fingers and pinch the rope and then come back the other direction and just do this. What this does is it kind of presses the wax into the cordage more. You can also buy pre-waxed uh, thread, and I do use that sometimes, but this is an easy way to do it if you don't have any of that. All right, now we have that. You're probably going to need at least two, um, two lengths of this, so four arms length uh, cut into two pieces. Now we're going to start by taking five needles of various lengths. Um, and you're going to line up the narrow ends. So you have all five of them starting about the same place. Uh, and you'll see that they all are different lengths here. Uh, that will be useful later, um, but yeah, you'll see how that works. Then you take your cordage, your waxed cordage, and you're going to line it up with a little bit of overlap at the end. And then you are going to leave a bit of them sticking out like that and then you're going to start wrapping. You're going to go over the top like that so that then you have them overlapping like that. And you're going to do about 10 wraps or so. Sorry, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then we're going to start bending that over like so. Let's do a few more. One, two, three, okay, that'll work. So then you're going to bend it over entirely, like so. And this is where we're going to now wrap a couple times over like that so that you're now bending the tips over to make a center. And now comes for the fun part. Now we're going to thread the other end of the needle like so and leave a bit like that. And then, with the part you've already created, you're now going to go over the top like that, and you're going to take the needle and go right through the center.
and then you're going to give about five wraps one two three four five and then go through the center again What you're doing is you're bending that to make that go down in a spiral. So then we're going to do five more wraps. Like so. And then guess what? Right down the center again. So you're basically going to continue around till you get back to the beginning, right around there. So let's keep doing that. And right down the center again. Okay, now we have a spiral that goes twice around, once in the center and then once all the way back around again. Now we have it going around twice, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a looser weave. So to do that, we're going to go once around like that, and then come around again. like so and then we're going to do the weave between the inner layer and the outer layer so right in there and this is when you start using the needle part So now you've got a lot of green showing now, which is actually what we want. So do the next one. One, two, and then in between the inner and outer one. Okay. Now you're going to get a lot of repetition here, so just bear with me. It's one of the magics of making this type of basket, is it looks like there's a lot of nothing going on until there's actually something. And suddenly you're like, wow, that's an amazing pattern going on. So this is the longest point, is the just getting started. It goes a lot faster once we get past these first couple stages. And I'm guessing if a actual pine needle basket weaver saw me doing this, they'd be telling me everything I'm doing wrong. But because we're not actually using pine needles, we're using scotch broom, I could say, hey, that's just the way scotch broom baskets are. They're different than pine needle baskets, and I can get away with it. Because honestly, I really have no clue what I'm doing.
it's just fun to do. This is a functional basket and you're very free to go online to this magical place called YouTube and look up other techniques that might be better suited to what I am doing. This is just stuff that works. Okay, now it's time to start the stitch that we are going to be doing for the rest of the basket. Now, notice the next stitch that we have is this one right here. Now, the trick to this next part is instead of going between this layer and this layer, we're going to go right through the center. So it'd be like going through the middle of the needles like that. We're going to be doing that basically for the rest of the basket is going through the middle of the needles. And we're also going to go through the middle of the stitch. So we're going to hit that one and here's the important part. We're going to go in front of the stitch in the front of the basket. In the back we're going to hit behind the stitch. So. I will go through that and then I'll show you again on the next round. Okay, and over once. And then for the next stitch, go in front of the stitch in the front. And this is going to require you to go diagonally, like that. And we're going to hit behind a stitch on the back. So, front, back. This isn't absolutely necessary, but to get the pattern you're going to see later develop, this is what you want to do, and you want to continue that every single time you make a stitch. Uh, okay, let's go over again. Front, back. Now, it, the basket may want to start curving up already. Probably want to avoid that, so you can always bend it down until it is flatter again. Like so. The stitches are uneven at the moment. We can work on that later. You can kind of push the stitches around a little bit the more even. Generally looks better if you have a more even, but we'll worry about that also later. Let's go another one. In front, behind. Okay, so we are going to add another needle to this, both to replace one that is already getting uh, short, uh, but also because we want to have more than five at a time to make the basket fatter. Uh, it'll make it go faster to build the entire thing. Um, so first off, I'm going to go and start a stitch in front and behind. Okay, but before I pull it tight, I'm going to, if I can get this uncut, I'm going to take the squatch broom needle. Now, I'm going to do something that if I were doing a pine needle basket, I'd do it backwards. With pine needle baskets, you generally start with the skinny end. 
I'm actually going to flip it around and I'm going to use the fat end. The reason being these are fatter than pine needles and I want the skinny end to be the parts that show if any of them poke out at the end. You have more control over where they start than where they end. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on the inside. You don't want it on top because then it's going to stick out. You want it between the wraps that you're about to do. You set it in there and pull that tight. And then you're going to wrap around. Right now it's just kind of sitting there. I'm going to do the next stitch and then we're going to pull that tight. And that is starting to lock that one in to place. So let's go another one around. Front and behind. And I'm going to add another one now. All right, and we take the next one, put it in the middle somewhere, so it's in between. Pull that tight, go around, go in front of the one stitch behind the stitch in the back. We're just going to keep going around. And let's add another one. You want them to all be different lengths because you want them to end at different times. Okay, so I've been going around a little bit further. Um, this is now something to start paying attention to. Right here you can see one of them that is ending. Now it's not a problem, you just go along like normal, but it's a good time to remind you to add new ones in. When one ends, you add the other one, another one in. So probably the next one is where I will add one in to replace the one that is now ending. Okay, and then it keeps you at about consistent, about as consistent as you're going to get with Scotch Broom. Now, here's something else to consider. If you're going to try and do a flat piece, you want the coils to stay relatively flat. In order to do that, here's something to do. So, you can start the needle here. Or you can start the needle up here, or start it down here. If you start the needle down here, that's going to tend to curve the entire thing upwards. That's how you get the edge on a bowl. If you start it over here, that's going to tend to, when you wrap around, it's going to tend to wrap it downwards. So I generally try to, if I'm trying to keep it flat, I will usually come in somewhere up here. Like that. In order to try and keep the basket from curving upwards too early. All right, and now you might notice that you're starting to get a spiral around the entire thing. And all that is, let's get to a good one. Let's get a little, zoom in a little closer. It's just the one stitch, second stitch, third stitch. And it's just exactly what we've been doing all the way around. But it turns into this really cool pattern. If 
you always go in front of the stitch on the previous one, then you get this cool pattern on the front and on the back. Something else to note when you're doing these is sometimes you'll get to the point where the needle just really doesn't want to go through. It's nice to have a thimble or a, or a flat piece of metal or something to help push it through. Um, that way it will hopefully make it through. So we're pretty much to the point we're out of this thread. So I'm going to go through one more time. Okay, that's probably good. And now we're going to come back with a next piece of thread. And to do this, let's thread a new piece on. All we're going to do is we're going to go through Down here is probably good. I'm going to try and get it through the middle somewhere. The fact that we can't see the needle coming through is a good sign because that's where the path of the thread's going to be. Now I had to soak the entire thing because it had dried out overnight. Um, so, everything seems to be a little bit tighter right now, but I'm soaking the next batch. Okay, so now we take that, we're going to pull it up, and we're going to hide it in there like so and follow where the next one would go you have to be careful because it's very easy to pull out at this point you can use the other one to help it stay in place for now the old one to pull it tight and then the new one Again, don't pull it too tight yet. And go around. Do the next stitch. Okay, now you should be able to start pulling it tight. The next stitch. Okay, and this one should be able to pull nice and tight. Now you're gonna have a couple loose, somewhat loose ones there. That one's loose. But for the most part, that's going to disappear as we continue on. If we don't like it, we can always hide it later or cut it off later. Along with that, we'll be cutting that off as well. And then we just keep going. All right, so I've got a pretty good disc now. It's relatively flat. Uh, but now I want to make this into a basket, so I want the sides to start curving up. So what I basically need to do is get these to start coming over the top like that in order to make the sides curve upwards like that. And this has to do with the angle that you stitch at. Um, what I have been doing before is making sure it stays on the side and the way I do that is when I stitch I stitch at an angle like that. Now I'm going to start tipping it up like that and I'm going to do 
more of a straight up and down stitch or even slightly tilted inwards like that in order to bring the sides up. So what I'm going to do is instead of starting kind of high on the stitch, I'm going to start a little bit lower. So let's try right there. And normally I would have the stitch come out down here. I'm going to be up a little bit higher right there. Uh, I'll start by doing that and over time I'll get it higher and higher as I go. So you might be able to see I'm already starting to tilt it upwards a little bit. And I'll do that on every stitch from now on. So. Start lower. Come up higher as opposed to down here. I'm having it come out up here. And by the way, this I had to soak this again. It's the next day. Um, I had to soak it again, so I'm using the thimble to push it through because it's pretty tough at the moment. This the um, the needles haven't gotten soft yet. They're still working on that. Okay, again, I'm getting it to tilt upwards. Go to the next stitch. All right. As you can see, it's starting to come upwards the way I want. So I'll get back to you once I've gone through a few more and I will show you how it looks as it's curved upwards. Okay, what we have now is our basket starting to take shape. I ran out of string, so I had to add some more there, but it is now starting to curve upwards. Um, I will show you a little bit more once we get a little bit more done there. I think we're starting to chafe a little bit because of all the stuff. So I just took some uh, blue painter's tape and wrapped it around my finger a few times. That way when I'm pulling on the string, it doesn't just keep tearing into my skin right there. Um, I think you could probably use athletic tape or something like that as well, but I just happen to have some blue painter's tape nearby. Uh, it just makes it so it's not so rough on my fingers. Now I'm getting closer to the end of this basket and I've decided I want to curve the sides inwards a little bit. So to do that, I go through like normal. And then as I'm pulling it tight, I grab the needles and I kind of push or pull to the inside some. And then pull this tight. And by deliberately bending it, it pulls it inwards slightly. If you can see that, which I've been doing the last couple of rounds, I'm trying to tilt it inwards a little bit. It's not going to be a lot, but I just want to give it a little bit more of an inward curve. I think it's just going to be prettier that way. Okay, so I've got the basket to the size I want it for the most part. Uh, and so I'm going to add the very last needle to it. And just toss that in. That's good. Okay. And now it's time to finish off the basket. And I've still got all these. So, all I'm going to do is keep going, keep adding, or keep stitching, go around like it would normally, but instead of adding anything, I am going to basically just go until everything uh, tapers off naturally. So with this many, I will probably have to go around, what? once more or so, 
And by the time it gets back to the beginning, it will be all done. I guess I could do one more. A basket now. Uh, there's a few things we need to finish off. We're going to go one more time. And then what we're going to do, that is probably tight enough as it is. So we are going to cut that one off right there. Now these other strings, what we're going to do for these ones is we're just going to have them come up and we're going to have it go back into the inside. So I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to have it come up to right there. Rethread it on there. Then inside, pull it through. And then I'm going to cut that off on the inside. That way it's not showing on the outside of it. Do that with this one too. Okay, and then you could just trim up any spots that you don't like. Any needles that are sticking out. But what you have now is a completed basket. So there you go, my pine needle style scotch broom basket tutorial. These pictures were taken about four months after I filmed all of that because I got distracted by my next projects before I got around to finish editing. The basket has faded a little, it's not as vibrant green, but it has kept its shape very well. So thanks for all your patience through my 40 minute video and I hope you enjoyed it. But if you didn't, I'm sure I'll hear all about it in the comments. So until next time, bye!